Hi, this is Alexander Budzinski. Today I will show you uh, a bit of uh, a bit more of Core Designer, its workflows, uh, review mapping and modeling. Mm, I will create the scene that you see uh, now in the second part. Um, but in the first part, I will show, I want to show you um, some of review mapping and uh, point out how important it is uh, to not um, overload the scene. First, I would like to create a, um, a blocks uh, that I will unwrap and export and import uh, back into engine and reuse them. Uh, this is a, a equivalent of a um, typical workflow that CryDesign should be performing. So, objects should, uh, after finishing the modules or certain pieces, um, export it to CGF and import it back. Uh, of course, a bigger scenes, bigger bigger objects such as the um, the platform or the building that I created last time. Uh, it's completely fine to stay as a card designer, but if you're gonna uh, create plenty of small props uh, using card designer, <coughs> it's really better to export and import them back as a CGF. Something like that. Then a second module, maybe a bit longer. Like that. And maybe for a third module. Um, something like this. Uh, shape. Um, so I have three blocks, and I would like to add some details to it. It's going to be easier from this perspective. Uh, keep in mind that I have a uh, 90 degree snap, so this way it's much easier for me to keep the circle straight. Okay. <clears throat> so I have my, uh, my, my uh, blocks pieces. I created them within one, uh, one asset, one mesh. My mistake, but that's not a problem. We can separate it. Um, now, I would like to um, unwrap those objects. In order to do that, uh, we need to uh, go into um, Groups and UE, click on UE Mapping, and open UE Map Editor. The windows pop up, pops up. We can dock it. We see better what we are doing, something like that. And now uh, let's select the faces that you want to. Aha, uh -huh. maybe it's better if you have actually some material assigned to it. I prepared a um, simple uh, material for those objects. You see, um, when assigned the uh, <coughs> sorry, how cube map uh, mapping is applied, so the texture actually is placed in the random places. Um, now um, let's change it, and actually let's actually put uh, the signs where we want them to be. So click on the polygon, select those uh, faces that we want to map now. Plane. And now let's just move them. Mm -hmm. 
just like that. Keep horizontal. Yes, this is this is much better. Having those faces selected, I invert selection and just apply, uh, keep mapping, and then I will just because I don't need anything else, then just a color on them. So and just do something like this. Move so, this island away. Move it back. You don't have to. It will never repeat on this place, but why not? Ah, yeah, for some. Ah, I move it away. It's my fault. Okay. Uh, so we have this uh, this piece mapped. I would like to show you um, <coughs> interesting uh, feature. Uh, the, it's, it's it's useful when we want to stitch uh, islands of of um, mapped faces together. So uh, I want to select uh, this uh, ring of uh, loop of faces. Let's uh, see there, unwrap them, and let's just say for some reason that. Um, those faces we separate, they are mapped in the wrong place. What we can do, we can select this and it automatically detects which face, um, which edge is um, connected to it. And if you move and so, the whole piece moves. This is useful uh, especially for and more organic objects where you have a group of faces that will automatically move, rotate. Uh, that's, that will be this mod, so uh, move, rotate, and stitch to to another object. Um, with those, um, with this object selected, this is what I wanted to show that. Um, Select connected. Let's um, do so. Now let's just um, <coughs> change the pivot of those objects because now this object is actually somewhere else. Then it has pivot outside of, this, of its object. So let's just change the pivot to let's say here this object. Uh, let's just check the pivot also in the corner and the same this object actually to be consequent let's change here now instead of using those objects here um, oh, by the way I'm not a perfectionist but prefer the shading to be uh, looking better. I'm choosing loop select and select the same group and add polygons to it and the same I'll do for and and try to use them. Now to think of it, I will probably try to create a new um, material uh, that is that has um, single um, has single mo single material in it. Because now if I <coughs> sorry now because when I export uh, um, when I export this block, when I import the object, we'll see what happens. So let's export this object as CGF. Let's go to our assets, objects, 
uh, here let's create a new folder five logs like this and let's call it block stool export let's call this block Let's call this block um, x free dot cgf and let's let's export this block s l as our shape. Um, the reason I should have uh, exported uh, those objects with um, materials without some materials is that it would be easier for me to change the colors of them. Mm, I'll show you what I mean. Let's uh, bring these objects back, the CGS. So those objects I should be using in the map, not those. Um, I would actually say that uh, for modeling purposes, um, it's better to save the map as a, as a canvas, as a, a place where I actually um, have my objects open for edit and I can uh, manipulate them, change them, and then export them and bring them back as CGS. <laughs> so now I would like to change the color of this, uh, of this piece. So um, this object has a material ID assigned to it. And there are um, when we created those um, those blocks. Now, if I um, want to change the material color, I will need to force changing the uh, force uh, some material to be applied for the for the whole object. Now, if I apply the yellow color, it will ask that um, yeah, this is only for the pure purposes. So I have I should have actually export this. Um, create a uh, non-summative material and just assign um, this block there. But for this uh, demo purposes, we can do this. Why not? Um, so this is how you should be working with Cry Designer. Have a map. Um, that is uh, that has your objects and have a map that has uh, the objects already created for you. So those I would just delete and I would only keep the CGFs. Now with those objects I can easily um, right, let's change the snap grid are using P for snap to pivot, uh, so I know they they are placed exactly on top of the other object. So even if I started with the first object uh, out of the grid snap, I know it's going to work. So yeah. And this is how you can create your your Crygo uh, world. Okay, yeah. Sometimes, um, of course, it's 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 um, when doing the level design, it's it's good to have um, to start with the white box and laying out the spaces of the map to, to see the how far the player can uh, should run. Uh, how, uh, what are the distances, but at some point um, maybe you want to go and add a little bit of details to just feel the mood, to, the, to, to um, figure out um, how tight spaces can be when adding uh, different props. And you're not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to create uh, just uh, blocks, 
maybe you want to create something a little bit more detailed that you can later pass on to the artist and say, um, you know, this is what I would like to have, this is um, the, how I see it, uh, the vision. Of course, it depends on the on the structure in the in the company, how much a level designer is an artist. Um, but from <coughs> sorry, my experience is uh, that um, level designer should be an artist that uh, that has an idea of of the composition and uh, have good sense of uh, of style on its own. So let's moving on to the uh, second part of the webinar I would like to be to show you how I've created this, this scene because sometimes um, maybe you want uh, something a bit more detailed to uh, give indication to to, the, to an artist um, how things should feel how things should look like I believe that the uh, level designer should also be an artist so um, it depends on the, on the structure of course but um, my experience, it's uh, it's usually better if the art, if the level designer really knows um, how to be an artist as well, and what is important for for artists. Okay, so let's go somewhere further. Let's start with the with the umbrella, and let's enable uh, stop to grid, save, always, and. I'll use our uh, grid. This is two by two, so uh, four by four. Sorry, something like this. Uh, we need. We can disable the stop to grid. Let's move it down a little bit. Let's extrude. Um, uh, anyway, I already prepared the materials, so I can assign them. I'll just go to my multi material and I will select uh, our umbrella color material. Um, yeah, so it's easier for me to figure out what is where. I don't need the bottom, of course. Um, so now I can go and start modeling. This is our tip, something like that. Uh, we're gonna subdivide it, so we need to add uh, loop cuts to make it uh, sharper. Otherwise, it's gonna be um, bulky and, and very round and smooth. Uh, for the lower part, I don't actually need to. Uh, to bevel it first, something like this, one side is fine, and now I can go and put more my sides, something like that, oh, like I said, the hardening of that. Um, Now I need to select, select, uh -huh. yeah, well I can just do loop select, then ring select, and automatically I have everything selected. So now I need to, <coughs> sorry, bevel it, something like, like this. Let's use the polyline tool and create a rounding. Create the roundings uh, for the uh, for the material material. Other side as well. 
like this. So I'll just select polygons again, the same thing on each side. Just like that. We are leaving this one on the top. Again, eight times. That uh, yeah, we have now a object, an object that has huh. should have left the and uh, look at here, but that's okay. We can add it now. I'm not terribly worried about the topology of this object um, because it wouldn't be used in the final game. If I'll be using this asset for the final game, then of course I'll try to keep it as low poly as possible. But on the other hand, um, this would require a specific kind of game because normally you have to you have to bake textures, you have to optimize your objects, and uh, so this this tool, as a, as good as it is, it's not fully, it's not it's not meant to replace the CC tool. It can it can help, and for the level design, it can be very useful. But, uh, yeah, there are easier tools to, to handle that are also compatible with other uh, applications. Okay, now let's give this umbrella a little bit of uh, material feel to it. Ah, you know what? We can also add one more cut here. This way we can easily just select more spaces that I want to push down. No, no, no. Those outside. Yes. And now we'll just Put them down and down like this. Yeah, more or less. It looks like it has whales in it, so that's more or less the look I'm after. Uh, let's keep it smooth. Yeah. Uh, next, I would like to add uh, the support uh, bars to it. And in order to do that, I will just create a box, something like this. Ah, not within the same object. No, let's create a box. Oh, I should have used snap to grid, but that's fine. It's also okay. Uh, let's assign dark material like this. Uh, what I need is also the pivot to be in the middle of the object, so some 
here. Now I can align this object to this and move it upwards. Not too much. Scale it like that. The up here is not too heavy. Uh, other look at it like that. Select the vertex, move it out upwards, not too high because it will cut through our umbrella. What's me here? That's perfect. I think it is perfect. Yeah, it's okay. And now uh, let's enable snap to angle. I think it's okay. And duplicate this object. Let's select all the vertices except for those. Okay. And now let's move it upwards. So it goes. It's, it looks like it's touching it, but it doesn't get through. Yeah. Let's duplicate this object. And Let's scale it down a bit. Let's choose the vertices, all those except for little ones. Let's move them upwards, just like that. Of course, I have no idea if this is the correct structure of the umbrella, but looks good enough. Be here, yeah, something like this. And middle uh, holding bar, let's add the cylinder. Mm, let's add forty six or oh, forty eight sides. So it's not nice and round like this. Uh, let's offset which edges is turned on like this. And let's extrude this piece upwards. Or before we do that, let's optimize it a bit. Selecting every second one. Ah, okay. I must have made I made a mistake here, but that's okay. It's less anyway. Let's do it again. Same mistake, same place. Collapse, and that's this is what we have now. Let's just extrude this piece. Uh, of course, it's too thick, but it's not a problem. We can just scale it in into axis like that. By the way, let's loop select and pull it down a little bit. And now let's bubble it. Something like that. Oh, something like that. So now let's select those vertices and down. Now, uh, just for the material reasons, I'll just add loop cut over here. So 
select this element here, um, loop select, and let's just assign the same material I use for the boss, just like that. Yeah, the same material. And we have already an object that can work. Let's merge those assets, tools, merge, and let's group this object. Because I want to keep the umbrella just in case as a subdivided object. So now I have my uh, umbrella. Let's move it away. Uh, I have what happened here. Oh, yeah, of course. I haven't joined everything. So let's ungroup it. Let's just uh, select this asset than this. Merge it again. This is all one piece, yes. Let's let's join those objects and group them, move them away. Okay. So now let's move to the uh, the chair and the, the table that was visible in the in the beginning of the tutorial. So in order to make a chair, I would need uh, plane, but I'll just use that. Let's assign some material that I can work on. Work on some grayish, maybe even darker. So now I just need this this polygon in the selection. Um, I'll just um, look at up to sides and just model something like that. Yeah. Now I can already subdivide it and see how how the curve actually looks like. Of course, I would need to add a loop cut, but I'm not going to do this with the subdivision. I, want, I will just do this asset uh, traditionally with um, level 2. So, um, tools, ah, yeah, edge. Select those two edges. Let's go to bevel mode. Let's say this is the amount of sides I want. This, is, this looks fine. Okay, that looks more or less okay. Um, let's uh, add some thickness to it. So I'll select polygon, connected, extrude multiple ah it doesn't create the back faces is oh, seems like there's no option um but it's okay i will not create one by one and those faces i will just uh for this reason i use mirror tool and I need Y axis. Do I need Y axis? Ah, X axis. Okay, it's fine. This way I want to mirror it, apply, freeze. And I have back faces. Maybe it's not a perfect way to, of doing it, but at least there's a way. This should be thinner. Loop. No. Hmm. Yeah, somehow 
what it looks for. Okay. So let's uh, let's let's um, add the feet. So I need cylinder. Uh huh. Uh huh. Because it's scaled, of course. Mm, now this object has to be. Uh, what's the X form? Rotation selection. Yes, everything. I didn't want to create a, a cylinder anyway inside of this object, but that was the reason. The object was scaled. So let's create something small. Oh, sorry, my mouse is very sensitive. Like this. Only thing is that it's too much. 16 is fine because it's going to be very small. Something like this. That's fine. Select these two objects and merge. Um, now let's let's duplicate this object and or no actually let's let's just mm, mirror it oh no actually no actually let's duplicate this object because I need to actually move it uh, outside a little bit as well so something like this is better. Okay. Oh, maybe this chair not going to be very proportional. That's fine. Uh, let's merge those objects. Merge. This. Of course, this is wrong. Normally, you should not scale like that. At least, that should be a scale spline, and then you have a uh, shape following it. But for this reason, it's okay. Um, let's mirror this object again. Oh, first, let's reset X form to mirror. Uh, Let's make the object better somehow wide like this. Fine. And now let's select those vertices. So let's uh, continue with uh, creating the bars one by one. We don't need too many of them. Oh, this is available. Um, like this, it's shorter. Wider. Let's copy it to the other side. Here as well. Fine. Snapping angle would be nice. Ah. Like that. Right. 
now uh, for the wooden uh, planks, the seat. Oh, for some reason, this one is too short. Ah, yeah, because the back one is the outside one, that's why it's shorter. That's fine. So, uh, let's merge all of this. Like this. Those bars as well. Now let's create a box again. Hmm. Actually, let's just create one bar and just copy it. It's gonna be faster. And speed is good. Speed is always good. Select those edges. Bevel them. Ah. Yeah, probably we need to reset X1 again. That um, helps when the object is scaled, rotated, or something happened during the. Uh, during the transformation. Yeah. This is fine. Now let's duplicate it a couple of times. And this dot should be somewhere here. I can make them longer a bit. Like this is enough. Let's add those together. Um, with merge, let's merge with this chair. Now, one last thing is that I want to assign material. I can here. So everything, those polygons here from the um, wooden elements, uh, select and collect. All seems good. Ah, except for those. Is right. Maybe the proportions are wrong. Maybe um, the chair could be a little bit, a little bit uh, more taken care of. I didn't work it, uh, work with it uh, for the picture with no reference. So I think it's good enough. At, at least it gives more or less the, the the feel I would like to have for for the listing. And in the end. In the end, this is what matters. This is not a final object and it's not meant to be. But it's a good uh, starting point. Okay. Um, I would like to have a table as well. So for the table, let's, um, let's create an object 
Um, okay, so to create a table, we can uh, create a very similar thing as we did with the chair. Let's create the wooden planks. Something like this. Okay. Maybe a bit wider. Something like this. Select those edges. Let's bevel them. It looks fine. Um, now let's duplicate this asset to create a square. Actually, we don't need this one because it's almost a square. So now I would like to create a cylinder, add it to the next sides, turn the snap to grid, create a circle, something like this, perfect. So I will do snapping and just move it here. Yeah. Now select this object and that, tools, boolean, intersection. Yeah, it's better, it's rounder. Now let's select the materials, assign the one in blank to it. Um, now for the for the rest of the table. I'm gonna be quick and dirty with this. Merge. Yeah, seems good. Much rotate. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not gonna be lazy about the bottom of the of the table. So what I'm gonna do? Click in the chair and select polygons. it's rotated that's why it's aligned it to to the proper orientation of the table but it's okay just make it a little bit bigger this a little bit higher I'll just choose those bars and let make them fit Seems fine. Yeah, good enough. This 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 fits more or less uh, the sizes. And now the in the in this scene, I have also uh, this object that. Um, I can show you how quickly you can make it. Mm. This nice looking cutout. 
I'm not going to show the, the whole uh, element. I just want to show you how to cut out this uh, interesting um, form. So, um, ah, we want to create a new object. So, like this. Let's assign something nicer. Ah, let's work on this side, so it's brighter. So now, uh, let's just say I want to um, I want to cut out um, yeah the three elements uh, vertically um, then make uh, some nice like this shape before with the curve uh, something like this yeah or even um, like I did for the Chinese garden um, actually I used different technique I just made a grid and then I removed um, edges one by one but this also looks fine offset tool of course but interesting element uh, interesting functionality of the of the designer is that you can repeat last operation with the alt button so for example I created this uh, um, uh, offset shape here I can just click, click uh, alt uh, left mouse button on a new element and I just repeat the steps now normally I should um, select those uh, edges in, inside and just remove them, but let's just say that uh, we are too lazy. So I would like to extrude this now to the other side. Again, it, when it meets the back face, it works um, automatically. It removes it, so it's fine. It is a nice cutout. And the same, have the same depth. In this case, it's uh, cutting it through. Uh, I'll just click again, Alt, left mouse button. I have also buildings, but those are easy to create. Um, if you have seen my previous webinar, you can easily get how it was made. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so this is it. Uh, I just wanted to, sh uh, to share with you that how important it is to export um, objects uh, through the Cry Designer uh, scene, um, then reuse it as a CGF, uh, show a little bit of the UV mapping, and then that uh, for even making a higher detailed white boxing elements, um, it's not really a big uh, struggle. And um, in the end, when you have a full map um, full of those objects, it's way easier um, to get uh, to understand the gameplay, to understand the, the 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 base of the map. Yeah. Thank you, and that's it for today. Bye bye.